Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. So today I just wanted to, because on Sundays, it's not really much going on as far as like the news and what's happening. So I want to take a, a retrospective look and see where we're at and potentially where we're going by looking in reverse. So you might have noticed that in the thumbnail, everything was pretty green, even though today is not really that much of a green day. Plus 0.13% is pretty great in TradFi world, but in crypto, it is nothing. So what I want to take a look at is just how things have gone. And just to remind you that, yes, we're not at all-time highs. Yes, it's kind of moving sideways. And yes, there are some, some draggery days. But these are the days that, as we move forward, are the days we're going to relish and remember. It's just that sometimes we just have to take a look back. So I'm, of course, using a little bit of uh, info from Into the Cryptiverse. Link's in the description, 10% off the first month. But what I wanted to show you is actually not this. Let's make it a little bit easier to see, first of all. And this is a heat map. And what I want to take a look at is just using the, the dollar first, then we're going to use Bitcoin, then we're going to use Ethereum, just how far we've come in such a short amount of time. So as we can see this, as far as the US dollar is concerned, there's a lot of red, a little bit of green in the last hour. I, could really, I couldn't really, I could care less about the last hour. How about the last 24 hours? Not too bad. I mean, quite honestly, it's just 24 hours. Who really cares? If you want to really do something, we need to zoom out. And to do that, we have to go over a couple different things. So the last seven days has been somewhat horrendous. And we all knew that September was, it's historically not a great month. If you take a look at it over the last 14 years or so, I think we've only had two or three different green months, maybe four. Correct me in the comments section. And this is not just in crypto. This is also in traditional markets. So over the last seven days, because today is the 8th of September, it's been brutal. It's been uh, pretty downwards. Now, some people say, well, I don't really consider 7% brutal. And you are, you are absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. But if we go over it, we can see very little green. Uniswap, dog with hat, sure. Algorand, wow, 6%. And AVAX up 3% in seven days. So congratulations to those holders. Let's go forward. Or let's go backwards even more. The last two weeks has been even more of a, a brutal red 14 days or so. And the only one that's been up has been Monero and Stark. And uh, maybe it looks like Phantom. But look at that, 15% down on Bitcoin. And of course, as we're moving forward, we kind of we get caught up in this narrative of like, I'm just down, I'm just down. I'm dollar cost averaging. I'm throwing sand in the ocean. This is worthless. Why do I keep doing this? And this is the reason. 30 days, not too bad, actually. You see a little bit of a reversal, right? Of course, we're looking at the US dollar, but hey, Tron is up 19% in, in a month. Can you believe that? AVAX is up 7%. Uniswap, Litecoin. Bitcoin down though, 9%. And Ethereum down 12%. Ouchie. But what if we really expand out the last 200 days, about six and a half months or so? We can see that, yeah, Bitcoin's been up. BNB's been up massively, 35%. 27% for Seoul and so on and so forth. Shiba Inu up <laughs> 38%. And these are the things as we start to move backward, You'll remember that in that bear market, which we let's be honest, we're in a we're in a bearish sentiment market, we can at least say. Back then, we were doing the same thing. We're like, why am I doing this? Why am I throwing sand in the ocean? Why do I keep getting into this? Because you know what's inevitable as time moves on. And for those of you that went a year back, it's looking pretty good, right? This is us. This is most of us. Uh, I have to tell you. I've lost uh, many a subscriber over the last year. I've lost, every time I do a video, I lose subscribers. And that's just pretty much how it is. And it's because people do not want to stick around. And I'm okay with that. Uh, this isn't for everybody. If it was easy, everybody would do it, and it's not. And if you take a look at it, just going back just a year, you can see just how much you're up. I mean, look at this. Bitcoin, you're up 110%. And all you had to do was just buy when everybody told you it's not going to happen. It's going to take longer. These four-year cycles don't work. This is totally different. Now, here we are. ETH was up 40%. BNB, 132%. Solana, 560 Sweet Mary and Joseph, even XRP was up 4%. Watch out. Doge, 51%. And you can just see, and there's just you know some that didn't really. And these are the ones you really want to start to take a look at and ask, ask yourself, should I be here? Because maybe they're just undervalued. Polkadot, Litecoin, Monero, Arbitrum, Matic, HBAR, Quant. EOS, Litecoin, what's going on? I can't answer that question. I can just tell you what historically has taken a look at. But 
Now that was great to look at the US dollar, but what if we just would have, let's just go back here to the hourly. What's great about this site is I can do a lot of things. And one of those things I can take a look at is, well, how does it bleed against Bitcoin? So we're gonna denominate everything in Bitcoin. How did we do? I mean, could we just have stuck there? Well, let's see. Over a day, no. Actually, you're doing pretty good over 24 hours. Don't celebrate just yet. It's just 24 hours. Over seven days, now you see some, some red creeping in, don't you? It was pretty bad. And there's some faster horses. BNB, Solana up 2%, 1%, Doge almost 4%. ADA, 6.6% compared to Bitcoin. Well, what about 14 days? Now we see more red. And the reason is because we're dominating everything in Bitcoin. You could have just invested in Bitcoin. But let's keep going. Because if we want to really see what's happening, we got to really zoom out. How about 30 days? Not too bad. And let's go back six and a half months or so. 200 days. Ah, now we see something, right? Now we see if you just would have gone to Bitcoin, it would have been pretty good. However, and this is the thing that we should all look at and we should all start to think to ourselves about, which is this, which is we know Bitcoin's the safest bet, right? Does anybody not think that in the crypto market? Is there like a safer bet? I guess stable coins, but whatever. But if we take a look at this and we think to ourselves, well, we know that's a stable bet, but at some point, are we looking for the 2x, 5x, 10x? Or are we looking for the 20x, 30x, 100x? I can't answer that for you, but it is important to take a look at these altcoins and see where we're going, as opposed to just not and dismissing everything and going, oh, they all suck. So let's just go back even farther for the year. Altcoins are great, but not, or most are not over the long haul. If you just would have put it in, into Bitcoin, and not gambled so much with with binance coin you're actually only up 10 percent with solana well 213 percent it's pretty good ton you're up 26 percent render you're up 59 percent near you're up 54 percent this is over a year but you see there's a a good amount of of spackling of redness all across the way and it's not like you're getting up that much like look at avax avax is only 10 percent what do we have over here Pepe, Pepe, you're up 315%. Congratulations. Fetch and so on and so forth. Now I just want to take a look at what about, we took a look at the dollar. We took a look at Bitcoin. And it might have been just safer just to do it that way. What if we could just denominate everything in Ethereum? How would we have done? Well, let's just go to this. Let's just go to the one day real quick. You're not doing so hot. If you would have done to pretty much everything else, you would have been way up. How about seven days? Eh, a little bit more red. How about 14 days? A little bit more. How about 30? Not so great. How about 200? A little bit more red, about 50, 50, we'll say. And what about one year? I got to tell you, as great as Ethereum is and what people tell us how great it is, and it's that layer, it's that layer one solution, just like you have the TCP IP protocol for, for the internet and everything, layer two is going to be built over it. Right now, it's kind of underperforming. And I can't, I, there's a plethora of reasons for why, but that's not the whole point of this video. Just to show you just price appreciation. So then I take a look at all this stuff and I think to myself, all right, so where are we? And we've shown this a couple of times, this Bitcoin market cycle bottom. And it is interesting that again, when we're talking about throwing sand in the ocean, just keep investing, keep dollar cost averaging, where is the, where is the, the positive, here's the positive. This, I just, I, I don't wanna show you the current market cycle. I don't wanna show you the one before or the one before that. I just wanna show you the one from 2018 and we'll take a look at 2013 and the current one in a second. But all you wanna know is this, the market cycle, the Bitcoin market cycle bottom, return on investment to the top, which would have been November, I wanna say 18th, 2021, if you were investing here, or even right here, it doesn't really matter, or even over here, but you were dollar cost averaging, from here to the tippy top, and that's Bitcoin, I might remind you, not the most 
massive of gains because we have diminishing returns, right? I mean, if you would have gotten to Bitcoin in 2009 and put a hundred bucks in, you'd be like hundred millionaire or something like that. But it's, but coming over here into the fourth cycle, you can see that you're up 20 X, actually 21 X. Let's do some numbers real quick. So the top of this was around 67,000, right? Depending on which exchange you want to believe the price was. I don't, I mean, there's tons of them out there, right? But in November 9th, 2021, roughly 66, 67,000. The price over here, December 15th, when it was nothing but bad news. Uh, well, first of all, this is what it looked like back then in 2017. If you were here, you remember this. From 2017, December 16th, to just a year later, it went from 20,000 to three to December 16, 2018, to three thousand two hundred dollars. Imagine, I was there. It wasn't too bad. I mean, you thought that everything was gonna crash at any moment, even farther down. People, I remember when this happened. People were calling for a thousand dollar Bitcoin. People actually were saying that it's gonna go to zero, and it didn't. And it just keeps re repeating itself over and over and over again. So that's December 16th. Is that what uh, we have over here? December 15th. Yeah, close enough. So 3,200 times essentially 20, you're looking at 66, 67,000. That's your ROI. That's pretty good. So where the heck are we? And we've shown this many a time. So I just want to show you that if we take a look at market cycle three, we did even better. From the bottom, which was 2015 to the top, which was 2017, that was 110X on Bitcoin. So where are we at? We're in market cycle five. And funny enough, on some areas, we're actually ahead of market cycle three when they did 110X. On sometimes, like today, right around now, we're right in the middle. So if you have a 20X over here and 110X over there, and I always feel like we got screwed out of a proper bull run because of the FTX, Voyager, Celsius, BlockFi nonsense that was going on, three arrows capital, I thought we were supposed to go much, much higher. So where do you think we can go? It's anybody's guess, but if we take a look back to see where we're going, Things aren't looking too bad. And then that, of course, is just looking at Bitcoin. There's another one I want you to, to notice. This is the ROI after the bottom, starting from 2018 for altcoins. Remember we talked about altcoins. Yes, more risky. Yes, I understand. Yes, underperforming. Got you. However, remember this. to what you want to do. Do you believe that Bitcoin right now is around 55,000? I think it could go over six figures, 100, 110. That's a 2X from this point right in here. What do you want to do? What are your goals? I can't tell you your goals. But if you take a look at how things worked out with altcoins, first of all, I'm looking at AVAX, BNB, Bitcoin as well. A I'm going to take Bitcoin out. I don't need that. Cardano, Doge, ETH, Solana, Ton, and Tron. I was going to put in XRP, but I don't want anybody to... It's not really a good look as far as XRP, thanks to Gary Gins on the SEC screwing them. But if we take a look here from December 2018, what do you notice? Pretty good run up, but there's only BNB and ETH existed. AVAX, well, Doge existed. I don't know why it's not here. Let's take a look here. I know AVAX didn't exist. Ton didn't exist yet. But we can see here from, like, let's just take 2020 to the top from the first top around April. I think it was a double top. That's why April and November, 2021. Look at these ROIs. AVAX was a 13X, eh, not that great. We could have just done Bitcoin, right? 18X, 20X. But look at this one. BNB, 144X. Cardano, a 70X, Dogecoin, 459X, Ethereum, 42X, Solana, 83X, and Tron, eh, 17X, what are you gonna do? And then if we go over here to November, yeah, pretty pretty good. 
there's just one little dish in this thing called Solana, 469X. I know people back then would say that was pretty risky. And you're right, it was. Because then after that, November 2021, what happened in, the, in 2022 when FTX collapsed? So did Solana. So yeah, it's one of these things where you're like, ah, altcoins, and you know, we get a little complacent with Bitcoin, even me. But you have to remember that if there's some impressive gains to be had, it's alts. And when is it to get into there? I've been buying alts now for over, and since 2022, I've taken some losses. I'm throwing sand in the ocean. But again, I don't really care. Because at some point, who knows whenever that is, that depends on if, if the macro factors play to our favor and we actually don't have a recession and we actually see some positive numbers. Money printer turns on, Fed cuts rates, not just 25 basis points, we're talking about 75, 125 basis points cuts. Then we see some things. I think things will be just fine. And then lastly, I just wanna show a couple things. If you're looking at the, at the site, and you know you can sign up for the site, it's free. I mean, some I think this part's free, the crypto risk indicators, I'm not for sure, don't quote me. But if you take a look at, well, two, three things actually. The risk levels over here, see these right here? If, you were, if you're taking a look at like what are super undervalued right now, Here's the risk levels, Tezos, Algo, Matic, VeChain, Atom, Monero, and DOT. It's only it's under 0 0.2. Litecoin, 0 0.27. ADA, 0 0.285. And to put this in perspective, Avalanche, I think, is probably one of the better ones at 0 0.35. It goes from 0 to 1. 1 is, the, is high risk, blow off top, crazy high prices. And 0 is like... It, we doubt it'll go lower unless it just totally collapse and we have like a Sam Bankman Freed moment. But if you take a look at like Bitcoin, it's at 0 0.454. It's actually been going lower. So if you take a look at this, this is one thing that I always look at to see what is massively underpriced. And that's just for these parts. Chime in on what you think is for your specific crypto digital asset you like. But also I like this one, there's two, crypto risk indicators and macro recession. If I open this up, what's cool about this, and actually, I want that. At some point. Ah, thank you. And we can see like, it's not just taking a look at one risk indicator or one certain metric, one on-chain analysis, it takes a how many of this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, like 18, 19, and puts them all together. Total market cap risk, Bitcoin risk, MBRBZ score, transaction fees, and of course the socials, YouTube subscribers and views. We can just see just how low we are right here. And look at this. And what's great about this is it's got three, three points you can kind of verify this. 8th of November, 2021, pretty damn overheated. 2017, super overheated. I don't know if it goes all the way back here. They didn't have social metrics even back then, but look at that. On-chain metrics, price metrics, 12 multiple, Bitcoin risk, super high, and you can kind of tell these things. I love this thing. And then right now, today, where are we? Wah, way lower. Just some on-chain metrics and price. And then also, last one, I like this one, the macro risk. Again, putting in a bunch of things, job openings, quits, initial claims, GDP, GDI, total business inventories, and treasury yield spreads. The only thing that really looks concerning, not the unemployment rate. I mean, even though it's trending, actually, we did go down 4.2 from 4.3, but still, there is a trend that's going up. The interest rates do are a massive, massive risk, and it's because it, they have totally uninverted. So it's just something to look at. And then lastly, lastly, before we get into a little q and I linked this website because over time, I forget things and I forget just how dark things were. So it's pretty interesting to see like just how many uh, different news stories, articles, pieces, hit pieces that, that come out and just pretty much say that, hey, everything's going to zero. And it, there is a combination here. This is called 99 Bitcoins. And you can take a look at time and see some major events that are put out here. So like this one here, I, I went all the way back to 2018 because we were talking about that. There was on March 7th, U.S. regular SEC says crypto exchange must register with the agency. <laughs> and they still haven't given them guidelines. And we're still up massively. Look at this one. 
don't know if you guys remember this. This is this is fun, actually. It's a trip down memory lane. Mark 2018, Google bans crypto advertisements. A couple days later, Twitter announces ban on crypto ads. A couple days later, Indian exchange coin secure hit by 3.5 million Bitcoin theft. And this was pretty good. Goldman Sachs announced to open a Bitcoin trading operation. Uh, also, May 2018, prosecutors raid the largest South Korean exchange. And you just got to go through this and just see like all these negative stories. And it just keeps playing over and over again. What is this? Now, oh, this guy's lost 60 million platform. Bitcoin is oh, that's pretty nice. Let's go forward a little bit. Ugh, look at all this stuff. CBOE stops listing Bitcoin features contracts. <laughs> Bitwise study finds majority of Bitcoin trading volume is faked by unregulated exchanges. SEC postpones decision on Bitcoin. And it just kind of keeps going and going and going. So again, like I know it seems like this is the worst time because we're chopping sideways. And I get it. I understand. I feel pretty much the same way. But as I look back to where we were at before, it just seems like things just kind of go over and over again. And again, I don't know what's going to happen. I remember not too long ago when we had a global pandemic. I don't care if you believe it or not. It really did screw up the markets for a bit, but it did allow a massive amount of money printing. So that was great. I mean, for the short term, long term, it's going to be awful for our country. But even back then, it was like Bitcoin's never gone through this. It's never going to recover. It's going to be a multi-year thing. Everything's going to collapse. Get out now. And here we are. And then, of course, during the uh, Russia-Ukraine war, Bitcoin's never been through wars. This is going to be World War III. Everybody get up now. Get out now. I'm like, well, I, I'm pretty sure we were still in Afghanistan at that point. And then it's just, this, th there's the same narratives over and over again. But I don't want to go too deep in that. Just wanted to remind you of where things are and hopefully where things are going. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all that great stuff. 